I've been asked uh, a number of times to uh, about uh, you know people interested in you know how we butcher meat and where we butcher meat and, and our uh, you know like a lot of people have like a, a fur shack where they do their skinning uh, of Martin and everything and where they'll like uh, you know work on their meat and stuff like that most of the time. Um, you know, I do have, we do have another place if we're doing like a lot of a lot of meat and stuff where we will grind up a bunch of uh, stuff we'll do a whole moose at once and and I have an old house that I used to live in that I'll uh, uh, do that in but uh, most of it's done in this house and all the animal skinning in the winter the Martin and the wolves and the Wolverine and all that sort of stuff is all done uh, actually right here hanging off a you know, um, straps and stuff that uh, you're right in the house and uh, um, you know see I'll do a yeah like uh, here's two caribou quarters this one's been all cleaned off uh, basically but just uh, the way I do it is I'll take off the uh, you know skin you know we'll uh, usually out in the field when we're shoot a caribou or something and a moose too uh, you know, it's so cold out that, uh, you know, I, I don't worry about having to cool the meat down. Most of my hunting is done in the wintertime, and, you know, I'm not worried about it. Unless I want to use the hide for something, and I'll skin it, the whole thing carefully. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, the hides on these caribous, I'll, uh, I'll skin a big square out of the back and stuff like that, but the stuff on the legs I, I just leave on and we just quarter the, the caribou. So when I get it in the house like this, you know, it's still got some uh, fur on it, you know, and so hide and, uh, and it's got a lot of hair on it and stuff like that. So this one has all been, you know, the hide's been taken off of it and uh, kind of use cold water. I just... Uh, soak it and you can see some of the meats kind of turning a little bit uh, dark from uh, drying just a little bit it's it's not hard or anything but it's it's dried a little bit uh, this meat uh, pretty much froze really fast most of that drying has been done from out in the uh, you know just laying in a in a big snow pile outside it gets a uh, just a little freezer burn you know or just starting to the and uh, so anyway, I just soak it with uh, a rag like this and uh, just get all that hair off and uh, anything else that's on it in the, if it was meat in the summertime, it would, might have like grass and stuff on it, you know. And, uh, and that's it, uh, except for uh, some of the tendons, the real big tendons and stuff like that, I'll try to to uh, cut into them like this used to be attached by a, a big heavy tendon and I'll uh, I'll cut off some of that stuff you know because that'll break your uh, that'll just stop your meat grinder and and most of this stuff uh, will be ground into ground meat and stuff like that or used for stew meat and, and stuff so uh, uh, any 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 meat that might have a possibility to go through the grind, you got to get these these tend heavy tendons out because they will break the cutters in the grinder sometimes. And so you know, except for like I say, some of these uh, tendons and stuff like that. You know, I consider all this meat, even the freezer burnt stuff, the stuff that was cut into, the stuff that was a little bloodshot. Um, that's all good meat. There's no uh, scrap. You know, I've already done. Uh, one quarter and these two I have left here and uh, yeah and so you know I, I basically I mean most of this is liquid in here that's the amount of scrap I got from two quarters so far just just these this tendon stuff so um, you know, I've taken people's scrap sometimes. I remember somebody gave me a big bag of, of, of scrap after uh, skinning and butchering a moose and getting it ready for making it to steaks and hamburger and stuff. And I, I took a big bag of that that was, God, it must have been 40, 50 pounds of meat. And 
mo the majority of that I just ground up into hamburger. You know, it was perfectly good meat, so the, there's no reason to, uh, you know, be having big piles of, of scrap to me uh, when you're butchering meat. And, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff in the store, as far as uh, I can tell anyway, is, uh, you know, when you buy hamburger or hot dogs or all that sort of stuff anyway, that's, you know, what you're doing. So with game meat, it's the same thing. There's no reason to waste it. It, it can all be grounded to hamburger if it doesn't make, like, good steaks or something. So, uh, yeah, like I say, you know, a couple of these tendons, um, you know, a little bit... A little bit uh, heavy, and uh, you know, just uh, yeah, I'll just cut them like that, and yeah. So uh, yeah, so you know, this is what I'm doing today. It's uh, we got a. I don't know, it's been 20 below here uh, last couple of nights. We got our first cold weather of the season. And uh, so I'm taking advantage of it and skinning a, a bunch of Martin. Um, you know, I got a bunch of uh, Martin done last night and brought in these quarters, and they're thawed out now and ready to, to go. And. Uh, And this is uh, up here. This is uh, this is all my Martin, uh, or some of the Martin. Actually, I got a bunch of up another pile bigger than this actually upstairs. And uh, yeah, and that that's that's mostly what I've been catching this winter. I've caught uh, very little uh, big animals. Um, as a matter of fact, most of my traps, I, I don't, when I first set out my traps, I set them out for Martin, and I don't even worry about too much for the big animals, and we're just kind of now getting going on the big animals, putting out traps, and uh, if you wait a little bit, the fur's a little more filled out and, and more full on the uh, wolves and stuff like that, and because I use the fur for myself, or Roughs. Most of the wolves I don't sell by far. I haven't sold a wolf in years now. Um, you know, it's just like the dogs. The dogs are developing their fur right now. You know, they're they're still, uh, especially with this warm weather we've had. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Here's another good one there. Just cut it. Yep. Well, then I just start. Stripping this off of the bones. Try to uh, try to just uh, work it down. Take all the meat. If I run into a, a big tendon or something like that, you know, we you know deal with it. But uh, just oops, and there's a yeah, there's a good little bone. Just work it off the bone into one big piece, and uh, and then what I'll do, because I already have enough meat to uh, eat at the moment, um, I uh, what I'll do is I'll wrap this all into uh, like a plastic wrap stuff, that uh, pallet wrap plastic, and. Uh, and wrap it all in a big ball and there's a bone there yeah right there piece of a bone and uh... and I'll wrap it up in that plastic and I'll freeze it outside and right now I got a you know from the you know the body of the uh... caribou and, and, the, and the other quarter I did uh, the other two quarters now um, that I've done uh, you know I got a big bunch of piles of meat all wrapped up real tight in this plastic and they're safe from freezer burning now they're just they're I can do anything I, I can butcher them uh, a month from now or whatever but anyway when I get like this the whole caribou or the whole moose or the whole you know me and my son will get the whole two caribou all 
done anything we haven't eaten, we'll uh, thaw it all out at once and have like a big butchering party. And we'll probably do that over in my old house. And uh, But it isn't worth firing up the old house just for, like I say, skinning a few martin uh, every day and, and maybe uh, butchering up a you know, these quarters and stuff, so, um, yeah, and then we'll grind that all into hamburger and package it all into individual, um, packages that we can just grab and eat as we, as we want, much like the packages that you would buy in a store and stuff, you know. So this is, see, there's another big heavy tendon, that baby would, uh, yeah, that would, that would, uh, very likely stop a, a meat grinder. So, uh, yeah. I just want to cut that away to, uh, once it gets down into the muscle, it gets really thin and, uh, and stuff like that, and the meat grinder will just take care of it. But that solid stuff will at least the meat grinder I have will, uh, yeah, you could easily break a, a cutter. There's a, another little, yeah, and just work it around the bone. There's some uh, nice fat, but it's kind of like a, maybe a little bit of a tendon there. Cut that away. Yeah. Now, this is these two are uh, the rear quarters, and they have uh, a lot more meat on them than the front. These caribou aren't too much different than deer. <coughs> Matter of fact, I think there are deer. I don't know deer too much. I never used to hunt. You know, when I was in the back in the the Boston where I'm from, I, I never hunted at all, really. Uh, but. Uh, but I think some of those, uh, like white-tailed deer or something like that, they're they're bigger than these. A lot of these caribou, although there are big caribou at times. I mean, I I've shoot a big bull and stuff like that. You, you know, you can they can be pretty big. But yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I don't like, uh, when the meat comes off, um, when the meat comes off of this thing, everything that comes off as I'm working my way down will be eaten. It's part of, it'll be made into something. <clears throat> and, 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 like, I'm just kind of, like, skinning it off the bones here and leaving behind, you know, instead of taking all the meat off, in big chunks and then working on the, the meat. It's just the way I've always done it. I, uh, I, uh, I work it as I go. And I do the same thing with the animals. Like when I take the skin off of an, an animal, I've never, um, what do they call it, uh, when you work a hide down, you take an animal's hide, you take a hide off an animal and then afterwards you scrape it and get all the flesh and the you know, stuff off of the hide, you know, um, God, what do they call that? I don't know, anyway, I don't do it like that. When the hide comes off of the animal, it's done. It, to me, it's much easier to work on the, uh, the meat or the hide when it's, when it's on the bone or on the animal. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's just the way I've always done it. And, uh, and a lot of that's because I never had anybody shown me how to do this. I mean, even to this day, I don't know, um, I don't really know how to do this, you know. I, I, I don't really know the way, I've seen a few people do it, but um, to this day, after even being up here in Alaska for 40 years, uh, you know, I don't, most of the hunting I've done, and definitely most of the butchering I've done, has just been with my family. So I don't really see how other people do things. So 
but this way works for me. And, uh, and uh, yeah. But a lot of people uh, skin in their houses up here. It's, uh, it's just uh, too much trouble to, uh, too much trouble to, uh, and it's cold, you know, and you got to burn more fuel to have a separate place to work on everything. And, uh, yeah, see, there it is. There's the, uh, yeah, yeah, most people I've seen would throw that away, feed it to the dogs or something like that, and that would be, uh, considered, uh, scrap but that's uh there's no reason to call it that i mean if it if this quarter hung for a while outside in the um heat like in the fall time you know you shoot a fall moose you go out during regular regular hunting season instead of the winter hunting season and uh it hung outside and um you know where it was warm and maybe the bloodshot meat got a little sour because it doesn't take long boy you know uh, it'd be different but when this meat this is why I like one of the reasons I, I like to hunt in the winter is because the meat freezes so fast on you there's no waste you know even the 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 bloodshot meat from the um, where the bullet hit the animal um, it, it's just like all it is is like hamburger you know there's just no there's nothing wrong with it it's just it's just meat that's been kind of ground up a little by the bullet and it's perfectly fresh there's no rot there's no souring uh, and so you just grind it up into hamburger you know it m wouldn't make a good steak or something like that or uh, or maybe even wouldn't uh, yeah you, you just grind it up so anyway there we go. That thing is, uh, I got a big bunch of uh, bones outside the door. Uh, it's where I throw all my carcasses and my pieces of hide. And uh, these bones can be cracked and made into soup. Uh, they can also be uh, used for, you know, you take, uh, cut the joint here and, and that piece there, uh, you know, hung in a tree uh, on a trap set for a uh, you know wolverine or a wolf make a good piece of bait um, and if something doesn't rob it on you during the winter by the end of winter it can be used as people food again like I say soup um, you know these both the marrow inside that's always good because uh, it's always cold up here there's, there's never anything going bad in the winter time you know so that's uh, yeah, that's, uh, we'll throw that outside, and, and, uh, and, and like I say here, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, take this over to the plastic on the table, and I'll wrap it up, and I'll, I'll show you that. Okay, and here's, uh, here's what I've done to, this is all the meat that came off of that caribou quarter. Um, like I say, they're really small chunks of meat next to a, a moose, you know, but uh, this is what I use. I, I, I use this uh, now for just this preliminary packaging. Uh, just put it in this and then if, uh, if, you know, if it's a month before we have a big family butchering party, there's no, not going to be any freezer burn. This is, it's, uh, you can buy it food grade, but this is pallet wrap stuff uh, that you buy for wrapping up stuff uh, on a pallet or something like that. Uh, actually, this may be food grade. Sometimes I buy food grade stuff, but I don't like wrapping paper um, because wrapping paper is impossible to wrap tight. There is no, the entire surface area of the meat is, uh, it's just like it has the skin on it or something. You know, there's no air can get in here. So this stuff would sit and uh, and not freezer burn and when we package our like individual packages of uh, you know steaks that don't have any bones in them and uh, and hamburger um, it's the same thing we wrap it really tight even tighter than this and put a bunch of layers on it the stuff is really cheap wrap too and it's uh, 
and, and no air. You can you can let this stuff sit in your freezer for a year, and, and the hamburger will just there'll be no freezer burn at all on it. Whereas with uh, wrapping paper, uh, I don't have good luck with keeping uh, meat in that for very long. Uh, and a lot of people it doesn't matter because they're going to eat up everything anyway within a short amount of time. But you get a moose, that thing's supposed to last. That can last now with just me and my wife and you know some family dinners and stuff like that uh, we go th we can go through we, we can have a moose last us a year now it used to be maybe two moose a year for you know when we had all the kids and and, and everything and I was sharing throughout the family and stuff you know but but uh, that whole moose you know we need it to last a year and we don't need no freezer burn beet at the end of the year so uh, I, I, I wrap it in this stuff so this stuff I'll I'll put outside okay and this is the woodshed and uh, I've just been keeping the meat here for now um, I'll just uh, yeah, just put that right there next to this one and this one and this one here this one's the uh, was just done earlier that's a front quarter that's uh, pretty small and then there's two more, two more here, and uh, and uh, and then I got a. Uh, this is where I got all my Martin that I haven't skinned yet. I keep them in the box. I got about a half dozen in there that I got to do, and uh, yeah, and yeah. So, and this is the yard here. Uh, yeah, this is the yard in winter, and I got a, as you can see, there's a bunch of Martin here. These are all the Martin. Last night there was a, uh, I had something to do, I had to go downtown and, uh, and stuff, so I was skinning Martin, and I didn't have time to uh, let them dry. And uh, and then turn them first side out. These are these are Martin. This is the way you you dry them for an hour or something like that. Uh, this way, and uh, let them kind of dry, and then you flip them inside out. You turn them inside out like a sock, and uh, with the first side out, and then you let them do the final drying. I didn't have time to, so all I had time to do was uh, skin them all and get them on the stretches. And if you um, if you uh, put them outside like that, they'll never get like hard dry. They might dry a little freezer burn or something like that, but uh, I can bring those inside, thaw them out, and, in, and just let them dry for a while. And uh, I'll do that tonight and, uh, and get them all drying in the house like, uh, you know, on, on those stretches. And, um, yeah, so... Uh, and uh, yeah, here's all the uh, the stuff. Here's all my uh, yeah. This is uh, here's a couple of uh, caribou quarters uh, left uh, uh, in the sled. There, uh, we, me and Joe, each got a caribou. Uh, he's uh, I think he wants to uh, do those those quarters himself, but anyway, um, so you know, here's all my pile of these are all the Martin carcasses. These are all get cooked up for the dogs. Uh, pieces of hide they'll all get fed to the dogs, and just got these are all the Martin carcasses from last night, and uh, yeah, that's. Uh, it's a big pile of all sorts of uh, stuff that'll all get used and, and stuff. And like I say, it's about 10 below right now, and uh, and it's uh, definitely a little chilly out, um, you know. So yeah, that's about that's about it. Uh, I guess I could. There's uh, me my that's. Kind of like my snow machine, 
and then uh, this is the wife snow machine it's a uh, that's our newest one uh, it's got an electric start it's really nice for the wife you know she she actually uses snow machines uh, much more than I do she'll put on way more miles than I will uh, on snow machines in the winter even though I do travel with them sometimes and I run them around town but she will drive them every single day uh, you know, she she goes to work, comes home for lunch, goes back to work, uh, three miles away, four miles away, and uh, and she's just constantly on the go with them in the evening, visiting grandkids and all that sort of stuff, and, and uh, yeah, and there are the dogs, and here's my son. Oh, we're going to get my son coming in the yard. He was checking his trap line. No. Yeah, no, it's my friend Tom Fogg. Okay, look at that. Yeah, my friend Tom Fogg. He used to live out in the Tozy River with us. Anyway, I don't know if he wants to be filmed, so I'll shut this off here. But, uh, yeah. Hey, Tom! Hey! 